Yo, Seth Gardner. I'm going to talk about a very highly requested topic. Uh, yeah, I keep getting asked about this one. So DMT machine elves, they're also known as like clockwork elves. And it's uh, these creatures, these entities people will see when they smoke DMT or have like uh, magic mushrooms, stuff like that, LSD. It seems to happen most of the time on uh, DMT. So, <clears throat> yeah, I thought this would be an interesting topic or subject matter for like horror stories. So that's part of why they kind of, the topic of DMT machine elves are in a lot of my books. I thought that would work perfectly for like uh, in a horror fiction and I, I think these things are real. I'm going to get into that. But yeah, I, I thought, oh, this would work really well for a series of like horror novels. And that's part of what I did. So you have my books, the, the uh, Horrors Call a series of books. I have 13 books. And yeah, DMT Machine Elves, they play uh, a major part in it. In fact, my, my latest book is uh, Call of the Machine Elves. So anyway, um, yeah. DMT machine elves. People that uh, have never smoked DMT a lot of the time dismiss this as like, oh, the people are just high and they're just seeing things. But no, it's not. It's not like when people, uh, you know, get high, they, like they smoke a joint. <clears throat> it's, it's not the same thing whatsoever. Every single person that has done this will tell you um, that it's like you're in another realm that you're like, and it's more real than any of this. And yeah, I have, I have a, it took me a while to kind of di like digest what I'm about to tell you. And this is just my opinion, but I've grown fairly certain that this is the case about uh, the truth about what they really are. A lot of people have different theories and that's fine. They can have their own theories. I'm not saying I know everything. But I think I know about this, so I'll tell you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I think basically a lot of the pictures, like the people do art of them, the uh, DMT machine elves, they'll oftentimes be depicted as having like many arms or many limbs or many faces too. So I'm a Buddhist. And um, <clears throat> Buddhism, you have the idea of uh, the devas, and the brahmas, and the nagas. Basically, I think that's what these things are. So, if you look at like a lot of Buddhist artwork depicting the Buddhist gods, like plural, uh, that they look like. DM, artwork of DMT machine elves. Why is that? I think that's because that's what these are. And uh, <clears throat> not just in the many arms, but many faces. So like you have uh, devas and brahmas. Brahmas are often depicted as having multiple faces. And the term is sometimes used interchangeably with devas and Buddhist sutras, there's distinctions between them, but a lot of the time it'll be used relatively interchangeably uh, between a lot of these terms. They're, they're talking about these higher beings, and that's kind of what it means in Buddhism. <clears throat> when it, it talks about multiple gods, it's not the same as how it's viewed in Abrahamic faiths, so like Christianity, Judaism, Islam, when it says uh, just God. So God or God's plural in Buddhism, it's more how people would think of angels and demons. Like, the, oh, there are many gods. It's, it's these higher beings. In fact, when you get down to the etymology of that, and I'm not trying to convince, like, convince anyone or convert anyone to Buddhism. I'm just telling you my honest thoughts. Um, 
as a Buddhist, I'm just telling you what I, I think DMT machine elves are. So, yeah, when you get into the etymology, uh, it's like the study of words. Well, where do these words come from? Well, <clears throat> you take a look at the word, uh, so you have devas, and there's devas, angelus devas. So that's like angels and fallen angels. If you were to compare it to Christianity or Islam, Judaism, and it's not exactly the same, like there's differences. Like in Buddhism, they talk about the idea of like ignorance a lot of the time more than uh, how just it's viewed as, oh, this is evil, this is good. Um, so that might be part of it. Like I've heard people say, oh, are DMT machine elves, are they all evil? Are they all just demonic or are they, or some of them nice? <coughs> well, according to Buddhism, well, yeah, it's, it's not either just A or B. It, it's like, and, and in fact, that question almost doesn't, kind of doesn't apply. It's just that these are these higher beings and the way they're going to react to you will vary. So... That's not to say, like, you should just worship all of them or or fear all of them. It's just that there are these powerful higher beings. High, there's higher than we are. And, yeah, so that's what devas, brahmas, nagas. And nagas are usually depicted as, like, reptilian-like. So my video I was talking about reptilians, that plays into that, too. And, uh... Devas, Brahmas, like I said, Brahmas with the multiple faces and the de Devas with the multiple arms. And even a lot of the time, they'll kind of look like, kind of like elf-like. So I think that's where the whole trope of elves, jesters, just the whole idea of like a clown, like kind of imp thing, that I think comes from, it's based on something that people were seeing because you have people from all, different cultures around the world, the earth, um, however you envision the earth. I say that because I'm a Buddhist flat earther. But if you are if you believe it's a globe, that's your opinion, I respect it. But people in different cultures throughout generations will see these things and they won't have a lot of experiential overlap and they'll still see the same things, like this, these like gesture, like creatures, these elf-like beings, and they end up looking a lot of the time, like if you look at like Buddhist, uh, like Tankas, they'll look like that. And yeah, like for one of my novels I have, uh, is a picture of sort of what I'm saying, like figures like this, move that closer, just to give you an idea of what I'm saying. And yeah, the etymology of uh, the word deva. So <coughs> the word deva, so you look at the terms uh, demon and devil. So demon, that's based on the word uh, daimon, but that's based on the word deva. So is the word devil, and so is the word Deus, which means God. So when it says multiple, like gods, plural, many gods, it's that these are higher beings than humans are. And that's where the etymology of all those, all those terms, it stems from Buddhism, um, not just Buddhism, Hinduism too. The term Deva is also in Hinduism, but I'm, I'm, making this video from a Buddhist perspective. So anyway, yeah, so that's where the, the word, and I'm not saying this to try to evangelize you to Buddhism. No, I respect whatever your religious beliefs are, and it kind of took me a while to process this. This wasn't the only thing that uh, led to me becoming Buddhist, but it was a part of it, uh, yeah, realizing that, in my opinion, as far as I could research it, yeah, this is where like a lot of these terms came from, that this is the original source of what people were trying to describe for these 
beings, these creatures, entities, however you want to put it. <coughs> and they're in a higher state, like their default state is, uh, so most of the time that'll be referred to as like a jhana state. And you, like going into a deep meditative state, uh, it's like the default state of mind for these uh, entities, DMT machine elves, devas, brahmas. And yeah, so it, it makes sense, and especially when you take into consideration, like you look into like, like esoteric Buddhism, Vajrayana Buddhism, and like they'll have like uh, tantric empowerments and yeah, that's because this plays a role in it. And people will, nowadays, they'll take DMT and they won't realize how serious this is. And I'm not saying that to scare everyone off, like it's not like you're just automatically gonna get possessed or something. No, but it's like a pretty serious thing and you need to be prepared. That's why, like in Buddhism, if you were to get like the type of empowerments I'm referring to, it's not something taken lightly. In fact, it's, it can be thought of as dangerous if, you, if you're not properly guided and stuff like that. So there's more, there's more to it, but that's, I'm just trying to give a brief summary on, on that matter. And when people, I sort of talked about this a bit before, but this is a, this video, it's going to combine, <clears throat> oh yeah, a lot, of, a lot of things that uh, I brushed upon before, but I wanted to go in way more detail and make a video specifically about the topic of DMT machine elves and my thoughts about that, especially from a, a Buddhist perspective, since I'm a Buddhist. So <clears throat> I did a video about the back rooms where I, I, I theorized that perhaps it could be uh, like the Bardo state or the intermediate state, which is kind of like this purgatory kind of waiting room. And that's described as like a yeah, so similarly, where like uh, the back rooms is like this waiting room kind of place that people will have this vision of the back rooms, this like empty room that they will have a dream about and it feels really real. And yeah, that sounds to me like maybe it's like the Bardo, the intermediate state and this like waiting place and then, yeah, and you could can possibly like encounter these entities there, and there's also the whole idea of uh, like store like storehouse consciousness, basically. There's multiple terms for that, but that explains to me why people come to the conclusion when they smoke DMT. I'll often hear a lot of the time like they'll get this idea that we're all one. Like we're all connected, and as I I did a video about that, uh, talking about that, but in uh, one of my previous videos, and how storehouse consciousness it says when you get to that state, and this really deep meditative state, uh, you get that impression because you're getting closer to nirvana, but you're still trying to label things with an identity and you get this flow of infinite consciousness and your natural reaction is to label it, like give it a name, like identify with it. So people then label it as, oh, this is all one thing. We're all one. And they just have that reaction. And so that's part that explains part of why people have that impression, that reaction when they smoke DMT and they encounter these machine elves and then they get this sensation of oneness. The whole idea that we're one is not a Buddhist teaching. It's that's like a more a Hindu teaching. Uh, and arguably 
uh, Taoist to an extent, but there's a lot of Taoist elements in uh, Buddhism. Well, if you get into like, yeah, like Zen Buddhism, which is the Buddhism I'm most familiar with. Um, but it's thought of as, so if you reach this storehouse consciousness, like that's this infinite flow of consciousness on the, st on the path to enlightenment. So you enter stream entry, part of, you enter the jhana states, you enter steam, excuse, excuse me, uh, stream entry, and you're on your way to the, the end goal is nirvana, like the final, final goal, which is just to totally out of the system, out of the matrix, like how everything is illusory. And that's another thing, how people get the impression that this is all an illusion. But what they're experiencing in the DMT realm, whatever you want to call it, is, is more real than this. Well, yeah, that's as Buddhism teaches that this isn't real. And that these beings higher than us are at a higher level. So, of course, it's going to feel more real. That's what it, like, um, it just kind of goes, uh, it syncs up with the teachings, with the, yeah, the, with the Dharma, the teachings of Buddhism. So people get this impression of uh, oneness, and my take is, yeah, that's, from a Buddhist perspective, it's uh, the idea that we're all one, isn't in Buddhism, that's uh, more of a Hindu um, idea, but within Buddhism, it's that you're still clinging to this identity on this higher uh, state, and you've reached this uh, storehouse consciousness, and you're trying to label it because that's all that's left. And you're, you're trying to label this like, oh, what is this? Is this God? Are we all one? Is this my higher self? So that explains that to me, that that's why people think that, but they haven't reached Nirvana. Nirvana is outside of that. It's because Nirvana literally means like to blow out, to just blow out of the system like a candle getting blown out and that's not the same as like um annihilation like the buddha was very clear in sutras that it's, it's not the same as just the annihilation of yourself because there's no such thing as yourself you don't really exist you're an, an illusion like this is all fake like a hallucination or the matrix yeah, so that's essentially my thoughts on that. And um, people, this goes back to ancient times, you know, yeah, not just Buddhism, but like, for example, like uh, the pyramids, if you had like the paintings and everything, uh, the, the depictions will look off and like, like these sort of, entities too so it's like all these different cultures describing the same things and buddhism hinduism and like i said even like like the pyramids and stuff like that and yeah like to build these pyramids they would like make deals with beings and a lot of the time that would require sacrifices and uh yeah it makes me think yeah this stuff is likely still going on uh it's not to say it's all like demonic, like I said, like and because of the idea that they're devas, it doesn't necessarily mean they're all bad or good. It's just that they're these higher beings, and some of them, I guess, probably want to will entertain the concept of doing deals because there's all sorts of rituals in Buddhism, Hinduism, where yeah, you like you get an empowerment. Or different things like that. So that makes sense to me that uh, they would explain that. that that's practice is still probably going on. And um, to people that may not even identify as, as Buddhists, like people might have, they might think they're aliens. And uh, which I don't believe since I'm a flat earther, but not in terms of outer space, at least, because I don't believe in outer space, but the idea that they're interdimensional, they're coming interdimensionally. And that's that makes sense, because this would be like another dimension, like the DMT realm, 
or the bardo state, the intermediate state, like within Buddhism, uh, that, that they would explain that to me. That, uh, yeah, so that's the truth. What I, what I think is the truth about DMT machine elves is that basically, yeah, they're the devas, brahmas, and nagas from Buddhism. And it's not necessarily that they're either good or bad. It's just these higher beings. Uh, so, yeah, it's not a lot of people say, oh, are they all just demonic? Well, some people have like friendly encounters. Some people have terrifying encounters with machine elves. So that varies. It's like saying like, are all wolves bad? Well, wolves aren't, I guess, domesticated. Maybe a, a dog is a better example. Like it just depends on the dog. But these are, we're, we're so we're humans, we're above dogs and these beings, the devas, brahmas, nagas, they're at a level above us. And in the sense that they're more complex, like sophisticated, like intellectually and everything. Like, uh, yeah, some brahmas are said to be able to like, I think about a thousand things at once. Whereas we, we, you know, just think about one thing at a time. So a lot of our manner of uh, describing things doesn't even really apply, I guess, because like, it's like a dog trying to under, like, understand or describe what we are. They could try, but they're never going to fully be able to describe it. So even though I'm trying my best to describe what, for example, a deva is uh, or a Brahma, um, I as a human, I'm not going to be able to entirely do that. I can try my best to get as close as I can, but it's going to be my definition, not just mine, any human's definition will kind of be fundamentally incomplete. Well, I guess with the, with the exception of Buddha, but like, you know what I mean? It's, it's just, I'm a, I'm a human and I'm trying to describe something higher than myself. So it's like, like, yeah, like I said, like a dog or an ant trying to describe a human. They can try their best to understand it. But it's never going to be a full explanation. In the, in, in the similar sense here, with uh, any human, ex with the exception of the Buddha, uh, I guess, uh, trying to describe these sort of higher beings. Or, uh, well, I say, yeah, with the exception of the Buddha or any other enlightened being, I, I guess would be the best answer for that from a Buddhist perspective. Yeah, this is a fascinating subject and uh, <clears throat> it took me <clears throat> a long time to really realize what they were. Like before I was Buddhist, I, I wondered, oh, are these all just demons? And before I became a flat earther, I remember wondering, are these all aliens? Like, yeah, and then yeah, so as of now, I, I'm, I'm a flat earther. I don't believe in aliens in the manner most people would describe it, like I said, but interdimensionally, because like this, this would be another dimension, basically. It's just, yeah, this DMT realm or intermediate state, bardo state, whatever you want to call it, uh, this deep jhana state. So... Yeah, that it's this deep meditative state that, yeah, it's, yeah, quite literally another dimension. Uh, that's, and that when people smoke DMT, it's like a shortcut there. And I'm not saying that, like, oh, you absolutely should not ever smoke DMT. But, yeah, it's like playing with fire. It's like... And the way that you need to be careful, and it certainly can be dangerous. I, and the way these entities, whatever you want to call them, machine elves, 
the way they'll react to you, like I, how I said, it varies. Um, maybe that depends on like the individual's karma. That's something that has occurred to me, especially ever since I, I became a Buddhist and everything. Yeah, like, so for example, let's say you go into, so let's say a fireman is going into a house that's burning down. Now, he'll have on like, whatever, a fireproof uh, suit or whatever, something like that to shield himself. I th now think of it like the more bad karma you have, the more likely they're going to, you're going to get like scared or it's going to feel terrifying or whatever. Like they'll, you'll feel like that they have it out for you. But if you have good karma, like you're just constantly doing good deeds and stuff like that, then maybe you have this happy experience where it's, uh, they, you, so it's like you view them as like either angels or demons, depending on your karma. And a lot of that is your like psychological state. That's sort of what karma is. Like if you think you're a bad person, like if you like if you you actually genuinely like are an evil person, you're gonna be in this horrible psychological state of mind. But if you're trying your best and you really try to be a good person and you think you are a good person you're in a better psychological state then. So that's my take on that. Um, that. That it might just be how they react to like your specific state, like based on like your karma, that it's like you're going into like maybe the same place. Yeah, that's, that part's a little bit more tough to say because there's still like a, heaven like heavenly realms and hell realms and buddhism so like <coughs> nirvana it's like heaven heaven like that's just the final place you want to go but it's out of the system out of samsara which is like the matrix basically the uh the false existence that we're in this isn't real and nirvana is exiting the matrix so if you have bad enough karma, if your psychological, like, mental state is, you, you th think you're that bad of a person and you have all this bad karma, like, you're basically, like, what most people would just say, evil. Yeah, you could end up in a hell realm. And that always surprises people, I've noticed. A lot of people don't, they're, they're surprised when they realize that hell is in Buddhism. But, uh, yeah. Like, for example, like, they'll use the term uh, Jigoku, like I mentioned before. I, one of my books is titled Jigoku. I base that largely on, uh, yeah, uh, some Buddhist ideas. Uh, I thought it'd be interesting to make a horror novel, but I had my own twist on it. And, um, yeah, so then there's uh, heaven, heavenly realms. And then you get into like the pure lands and stuff. And it depends on the certain school, specific schools of Buddhism. The teachings vary, but that the heaven, the heavenly realms, it's not the same as like what would be thought of in Christianity, for example, is heaven. Like, like in Christianity, heaven, that's final, it's eternal. But in Buddhism, heaven these heavenly realms that can have this, it's, it's better, it, it, is, it is like heavenly. It is, it's better, and you'll be in a better psychological state, and it will feel like an eternity, and a lot of the beings there and like these heavenly realms or the Brahma realms, they will think that it's eternal, but it's still part of samsara, so like the matrix, they won't realize that. And nirvana is exiting, where it's infinitely better, and it is permanent. It's 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 not something that's ever going to end. It's 
as opposed to the way it's viewed in uh, Christianity with heaven. The definition, like, not just Christianity, but Islam, Judaism, uh, yeah, with heaven and Abrahamic faiths and hell too, the idea that it's eternal because saying, well, if it's not eternal, then it wouldn't be heaven. Or if it's not eternal, it wouldn't be hell. In Buddhism, yeah, it's different where it'll have the impression of eternity and it is significantly longer here, but that the only thing that's eternal in that sense is nirvana because it's not in the system at all. It's not in the system of, like we'll use the term, like the triple world, the triple earth, where we have these different realms. Yeah, you have the heavenly realms, the Brahmas and stuff, the earth and the realm of like realms of like the hungry ghost and then the hell realms there's hot and cold hell realms it's like jigoku and like for like, like japanese buddhism and yeah then the like like i said the realms of the devas and jealous devas so that that's different that it's this is all contained in the system but to get to nirvana it's out of it so i guess this would be that the machine elves what, so what I posit is that the machine elves are in these higher realms. And yeah, I'm, I'm basing this like from a, a Buddhist perspective. And I mean, it seems pretty consistent to me, like how, like I said, like how they're always described as having these multiple arms or multiple faces too. And it all, it totally syncs up with uh, machine elves and this impression of that, oh, this is all fake, and that this realm is more real than this. Because that's what Buddhism teaches, that this is fake. And people get this sense of deja vu too, like, oh, I've been here before. Like, I've been here like an infinite amount of times. That's also what Buddhism teaches, yeah. That, uh, yeah, like, there's this, like, when you die, there's this life review, and you're reincarnated, and before that, you see the, the wheel of life, like, what the Buddha saw, yeah, uh, I guess this is uh, freaky stuff to some people if this is the first time they're they're hearing this or seriously, if they're seriously wondering about this, but I, I'm just saying what I think is true. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's not even so much that I necessarily want any of that to be true, but I think, because the idea of reincarnation is like scary. I mean, I guess that, yeah, the idea of hell is scary too. But it, I just go by with what I, I think is the most convincing or most plausible. And yeah, I've looked into this very, very heavily and this is just the tip of the iceberg. And I'm not saying any of this to try to persuade people to the way I'm thinking. Like I said before, I respect whatever your views are. But a lot of people were asking me to talk, talk more about machine elves. So I thought, well, okay, I'll do it. And uh, it's kind of a lot to process because this is, I'm, I'm kind of trying to summarize a, a real lot in a short amount of time, even though, how long have I been talking? I'm checking out, I don't know. I've been recording, this is 33 minutes right now. Yeah, so even though it seems like I've been, like this is a long, whatever, loquacious, overly verbose explanation it's not this is just like the really really short summary um so i'm trying to make this as concise as i can actually and uh yeah it's a lot to take in but it's a it's a wild rabbit hole when you start really looking into this stuff what the machine elves are and as best as i i can honestly discern uh, ascertain is that yeah, it's, this is the stuff from Buddhism, and it's what's always been described. Same with like re, how reincarnation, how that's always been described by different cultures, different generations. It's why it's always been described. It, like people have past life, like they remember memories of their past lives. How could people like, like why are they remembering that for thousands of years? Like people, every now and then people will remember well, it's because it's real, like it or not. I'm not saying that to convince you. I'm just telling, F. Gardner just likes to tell his honest opinions. 
And uh, yeah, so I, I've, done, I've looked into this, yeah, for years. I'm not claiming to be an expert, no. I don't think there are experts on this because this is so, just something that is just so profound and deep. And it's hard to really find out about this stuff too. Like, uh, yeah, the term machine elves, machine elf, I believe it was Terrence McKenna who first came up with that, who he first used that term. He's really famous for like smoking a lot of DMT and like sharing his thoughts on what these are. And, uh, yeah, so he certainly popularized uh, this, and he had his own theories about it. And, I mean, yeah, he was an intelligent guy, uh, but I, I don't know if he had, if he really understood, like, Buddhism, and I'm not claiming I'm an expert on it, even though I'm a Buddhist. Um, so, like, a lot of Westerners, when they get into this type of stuff, I think they will have misconceptions and I don't mean that as a bad thing like I don't mean that as as in like an arrogant thing like as in I know more than they do I don't mean it like that but a lot of Westerners they won't know what Buddhism has like always taught so they will reach these conclusions they'll perform mental gymnastics, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but they'll try to reconcile, oh, how could this be? Could this be an alien? Could this be just a demon? Could it be just a bad dream? Could I just have been hallucinating? Could it have been, was I just high? And that was it, it was just a bad trip. So a lot of the times when I'll hear people say stuff like that, it's it'll be much of the time, almost, yeah, almost always, honestly. It'll be a Westerner who just doesn't really know what Buddhism has always taught. So they won't they won't connect any of the dots that I'm connecting. They because it won't occur to them. They 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 won't know they because they don't know what Buddhism's taught out of lack lack of familiarity. So with their it yeah. They, they just won't have much experience or exposure to what Buddhism has taught. And they'll form their own conclusions. And that's, that's cool. They're entitled to believe what they want. I, I, most of the people I know are not Buddhist. I, I totally respect them. So I'm not trying to evangelize anybody to my religious beliefs. But I, I, I'd like to be an honest guy. I like to tell my honest thoughts. And this is just such a deep subject that it requires me to go into religious territory and deep, whatever, you know, this, this, this deep theological stuff, because that's what I think it is. This, it gets into this religious stuff, and I, I happen to be a Buddhist. So, yeah, comment down below if you uh, agree or disagree, and please subscribe to this uh, channel. That, that would mean a lot to F. Gardner. I'd really appreciate that. I hope you like this video, uh, and, and uh, leave a comment down below for uh, what you want me to uh, talk about next. I, I did a Q&A video uh, relatively recently, and I, I kept getting more and more questions. So yeah, if maybe just leave a comment down below, and maybe I'll read it, and then uh, yeah, I, I could just do a, vi a video about uh, some more of the questions, like I because I, I, I keep getting more and more questions. So if there's something you really want me to talk about. Yeah, I'll look at these comments, and uh, yeah, I'll try to I'll try to address as much as I can, and uh, make videos about whatever people want to hear about. And yeah, people kept asking about this one, understandably so, because uh, a lot of my books I'll get into this stuff. And uh, yeah, on that note, these are my I talked about these before. These are my two latest books. So, uh, Horror's Call. And Call of the Machine Elves. So yeah, check those out if you're interested. Okay, guys. Take care. Hope you like the video. Bye.